I'm Sean Stripling, and I'm going to talk to you today about gender equality, or inequality as the case may be sometimes. And we're going to have this discussion today through the lens of the household handicap, which is a subject that um, is near and dear to my heart. I happen to be a chief strategy officer at a marketing agency. I also am the global director of a center of excellence um, within that agency that's focused on building better marketing for women. So we talk about this a lot. And, um, but that's not truly the real reason that I'm passionate about it. I'm also a mom with two young daughters. And while I want them to understand and know the fight for equality, I don't want them to have to fight it. Um, and as I said, we talk about this a lot and we, we debate amongst colleagues, friends. Sometimes I talk about it in the produce section at Lowe's with random strangers. Anyone that'll give me five minutes, we talk a lot about gender issues. But I happened to be talking to a colleague one day that I respect and that person said, Sean, you know, I believe in gender equality, but what's the end goal? What are you really striving for? And it's this. Today in the US, women make 79 cents on each dollar a man earns and that has got to change. I was in a, a car yesterday for quite some time and listening to NPR and heard that at the rate that we're closing the gap, it will take us 100 years to reach parity. I'm hoping you guys can help me speed that up. And the gap is complex. It's not one thing, it's many. Um, as humans, I think we can acknowledge we all embody some sort of unconscious bias. That's on us, we have to work on it. I think um, it's important to also note that you may say, you know what, sometimes there's lack of representation at the very top or lack of representation in different roles within the professional world. Um, again, we need to hire more women and empower more women. You may even point to the educational system and say, you know what, young men and young boys are herded into math and science and they excel in technology. We have to change that as well. But for the purposes of today's talk, I wanna talk about this, performance misperceptions. And I want to ask you all to be thinking about this question as you hear the rest of the information. What if women are working harder than you think? Now, what happens? This is a chart that really explains um, how women are compensated in the workforce. And up until around age 30, men and women are, are at least closer in compensation than further apart. So um, we even see women earning as much as 90% of men and, at the same job, same title, up until about the age of 33. So what magically happens in the early 30s that makes things inequitable? Well, I think to understand that, we might need to take a look back at where we've come. And in the 50s and 60s, there was really just one major career choice for women, right? And that was motherhood. I think we all know the stories of our mothers and grandmothers. We were CEOs of the home, and we excelled at that. We were really good at it, and it's valuable work today. Um, and we, we knew when we were successful, right? It was easy to ex externalize that success. Our children were happy and healthy. They were productive citizens. We had a tidy house or a fancy dinner party. We knew when we were doing things well. It may not have been compensated, but it was certainly fulfilling. But that, that's not the construction today. And certainly into the 60s and full force into the 70s, women entered the workforce. Now, did all that household responsibility just magically disappear? Probably not. Did the spouses, partners, husbands intuitively step forward and said, honey, let me take on 50% of everything you've just been doing? <laughs> Some have, and I can tell you I wouldn't be on this stage today and wouldn't have achieved the things that I have if I didn't have a very supportive husband who does more than his fair share. But statistically, that's not the case. So self-reported, men say that they contribute about four hours a week to household tasks. Fantastic. Women contribute about 19 hours per week to household tasks and household management. No, no doubt some of you feel that, right? Now, if we simply look at that, there's an imbalance. It's not equitable, and that, that's probably been going on for a very long time. But I want to put it in a different context. So if you calculate the percentage of difference between four hours and 19 hours, the percentage of increase between those two numbers is 375%. That feels crushing. That feels crushing to a mom who's working outside the home as well because that's the weight that she carries with her to work. Now let me put it an even finer point on that. Those 19 hours per week over the course of a year add up to an extra month of work that she performs every year that her counterpart doesn't. 
And couple that with the fact that she must work 16 months to order in order to earn what he earns in one year, it's a bit frustrating and no doubt creates some tension at home. This is a completely different talk for another day. Um, but for today's purposes, I really want to focus on the career impact, okay? So you can kind of see where I'm headed with this. Um, and I'm not suggesting there's some big global conspiracy to, to hold women back or to overload them at home. These are things that we naturally do well. And I think that's a, an interesting point. We all align our skill sets with the tasks that match that. So men tend to gravitate towards home repair or car maintenance or maybe lawn or pest control, that sort of thing. And women gravitate towards the sanitation. It's our genetic imperative to keep the family healthy, to keep those kids alive so we clean for a reason. But so many of mom's tasks are invisible. If you think about it, she's making the doctor's appointments, she's organizing the home, she's figuring out after school chair care or summer care, she's orchestrating play dates, she's also learning the kids' names at school that her kids are friend with, friends with, she's learning those friends' parents' names so that she understands who in, who's influencing her children when she's not there. If you really think about it, these are leadership skills, right? She's running the home like a business. Now, Sheryl Sandberg, the CEO of Facebook, as well as Anne-Marie Slaughter, who wrote an article for the Atlantic Monthly called Why We Still Can't Have It All, great article, they've both been quoted as saying that women will never fully be able to compete professionally if they're constantly overwhelmed at home. And that's part of what I certainly want to discuss today. And you know what? We can't leave it at home either, can we? Who's the first person in the office typically asked to clean out the dirty fridge at the end of the week? And who's, thankfully, the first person to bring in a special treat for a colleague's, you know, birthday or special moment? And who's also likely to be planning those, um, you know, company events and holiday parties? It's women. Now, I, I'm not suggesting we strip the humanity out of the workplace because I think that those things are very meaningful. But they are undermining our credibility. So I challenge all of us today, perhaps don't be the first person to raise your hand. Just step back and see who else might be willing to do it as well. And truthfully, household management has always been undervalued because, again, back in the 50s, mom was not paid for it. It was not a paying job. But the Bureau of Economic Analysis actually modeled that if we were to capture all that household management and apply it to our economy, the gross domestic product would increase by 39%. It is valuable work. Now, this is a critical point that I'm going to come back to as I, I went ahead to some solutions today. But... Men, and dads in particular, perhaps have never been given the right opportunity or the right context to, va to see the value in their contributions at home. And I think that's going to be a point that we definitely need to explore. Does it really matter? I mean, that's what I wanted to talk about is the, the career impact here. And in fact, it does. So when asked of moms and dads, have you ever reduced your hours at work? Moms 42% of the time said yes, while dads only 28% of the time said yes. They were also asked, have you ever taken significant time off from work in order to deal with family or household needs? Certainly 39% of moms said yes, while only 24% of dads said yes. But critically, when you think about career impact, have you ever cut or stopped working for the family? And mom said yes at almost a third of the time where only 10% of dads said they had left work permanently for family. And does it matter from a management standpoint? Well, yes, it does. I um, surveyed 300 managers across this country, and here's what I found, that they are 127% more likely to say mom's career is affected by family matters more than dad's. At 86% of the time, they agreed that this present, prevented mom from getting ahead more so than dad's. And then finally, 25 brave souls out there admitted that moms are paid less than other people in the same title. It affects her. What can we do? So again, I want some solutions today. How can we help close that gap? Well, I believe content may be one of the keys. And Rather than merely reflect the present, I think content absolutely has the power to shape the future, and we have a responsibility in that. You know, I told you I work for an advertising agency, so I'm, I'm creating stories or helping others create stories that go out into the world. The problem is you, you can't be what you can't see. 
And this is a problem in TV. There was a McKinsey study done in 2014 that found for each hour a young girl watches of TV, the more limited she thinks her options in life are, and the more likely she is to equate her self-worth with her personal appearance. Now, conversely, for each hour of TV a young boy watches, the more sexist his views become, and, in fact, the less expectation society has for him. This is a problem in film. Can you believe the ratio of male to female characters has not changed since 1946? It's like they're still playing by the playbook of the 50s, right? It's unbelievable. And in fact, only 31% of speaking characters were women. And when there are roles in film that portray leadership or management or C-suite, only 14% of the time is cast as a woman. And this is a problem in, in my industry as well, in marketing. We see that only 13% of women in commercials are portrayed as working outside the home. And in fact, only 11% 11 of our creative directors are female, and, and we need more of those because this is the content that they need to create. And in fact, only 2% of all commercials showed men performing household duties like feeding or caring for the children or cleaning the house. And finally, Remember I said this was kind of a critical point that we haven't given dads the right opportunity to feel prideful about that kind of work? We haven't shown them in the right context? It's because stereotypes are harmful. They're actually really dangerous and I think quite lazy. Um, if you've taken in any content or you've watched TV ever, some of these commercials might ring a bell for you, but I want to talk about some of those stereotypes and how to identify them. So there is a sausage manufacturer who creates convenient breakfast sandwiches. No doubt a busy mom needs this product in her life, but I've seen commercials recently that were constructed like this. They created a swap between a farmer and a mom. So the mom goes to the farm and is taken to task on all the physical duties that she must perform at the farm, whereas the farmer has to go and do yoga with scented candles all day. <laughs> not helpful, not helpful. You may recognize this ad, I'm not going to name names, but there is, is for a household cleaning product. I have it at home right now, and I shouldn't. Um, but there's a, dad, <laughs> there's a dad changing a baby's diaper on the kitchen counter, and you can see behind him the kitchen is a disaster. And right on cue, mom walks in with the cleaning product, tisk tisk. she's there to, to fix it all, right? These are so harmful in two ways. We're, again, showing that mom is the only one competent at doing anything within the home, right? But unfortunately, we're showing dad at being less than successful. I mean, this man was willing to contribute. He was changing the diaper, and yet we aren't celebrating and showing that he does a really good job at those things. So I think the challenge for all of us today is really pretty simple. Um, if you create content, if you're a blogger or an artist, or in my case, a marketer, and create any kind of stories to share with the world, even just social sharing, think about the stories and the narratives you're putting out into the world. Don't use or support stereotypes. Really consider how you are setting up both men and women for success. And then if you simply just take in content, if you watch TV or you go to films, Vote with your dollar. Say no to those types of, of products and programming that don't create the equality that we want to see. Thank you.